I've got an opportunity to move churches. I've got a chance. But if there is something that has been hit, the prophetic ministry was shut up down. People have been trampling on it. And it is weighed down. When someone rises up and claims they're a prophet, people begin run away from him. Why has there been the gift trampled on? Why did the devil shatter the gift? Because the people in the gift have not been prepared. Praise the Lord. There's nothing as bad in salvation. Like someone being in the calling but they are not prepared. An example. In 2008, I began to preach at Baitababi. But I was not prepared in the gospel. When I could get the, the microphone and I go for door-to-door evangelism open air open air evangelism this is how I used to preach all of you who are not saved if you don't get saved God is going to destroy you leave religion you are going to die and live and live the words are like good, but there is lack of knowledge and preparation. Until Apostle Sempewa, you know him. God helped me to work with him alongside. And he told me, my son, if you want people to get saved, don't talk about anyone's religion. Talk about Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. So I began to get prepared. God has helped me. Many have gotten to Jesus because of good preparation and knowledge. And because of the preparation of the gospel. I've seen so many people are added unto me. The same applies to the prophetic gift. True people are gifted. People can prophesy. But they are not prepared. Someone can see a, a problem and he will get a microphone and say, You woman, stand up. Why do you have two men? It's true he has seen the, the two men, but there is lack of wisdom in what she has said. You need to call back a woman and tell her I've God has told you. You have two men. And you prepare her and tell her more when you are two. Amen. Amen. So the people began to, to go up bad against the prophetic gift. But we thank God. God has thought about us. And he has brought us his ministry. So, this is how I feel. This is more than just a calling. But I think if we come back and we are built up and set and prepared for what we have received, we are going to be established and many will be turned around. After my salvation, uh, I had my pastor talk with the many pastors around him. And he would say, now who is to go to the Bible school? But God helped after years. And he encouraged us to go to Bible school. And people were only looking at their calling. But they were not knowledgeable enough and prepared. When they called people to prepare the pastors, pastors will not show up, they will send the flock. But let us agree. Everyone has been given by God. Me, Apostle Henry. What God gave us. It's not the same with Pastor Henry. But when we join all the gifts together, and everyone believes in the other, brothers, we are going to we want to thank God for the visitors ever since tomorrow, yesterday. The man has spoken the heart of them. And we've been visited. I want to beseech you. Be serious in the realm of the spirit. Be serious. When God is speaking, I have learned to control the way I go for short call. When God is speaking, I've learned how to switch off phones. When God is speaking, I've learned how to control myself and be strengthened and established. Because in the spirit world, one leg or one time away, you are missing a lot. Hallelujah. Then you miss. There is nothing as hard in the spirit world like being uh, missing anything. God can come early, but he can delay to come back. 
God is quick at, quick at coming. But to come back is not easy. At Every opportunity you get in the presence of God, use it vitally. Amen. You've been privileged. You've never reached a time as ministers when people begin to. I had an accident. I was a minister. But people had always to help you how to, how to make you drink, how to dress you. They have to think about you. And from that moment, I knew that God has told me. The time I've, I've left, I'm going to use it once. Why does David say? I was glad. And they told me to go come to the presence of the Lord. David had never been there. But they only told him, let's go to the house of God. But he said he was glad. What does he plan? Times. When that yes. voice that used to speak him was no more. There are times when he was out of the voice. I've been privileged. I've never been to the prison. But when you're in the prison and you see a walking child, okay, boom. You begin to admire. When you are in the prison, but your eyes can see through. When such moments come to us, we learn how to use the times we have valuable. So it's only in church where you find someone coming. The conference ends, they ask you, you that man has taught. What did you learn? That man is good at teaching. Brothers, let's do something new. Today, let's go back. We talk whatever has been in the heart of God. Mm. So to be sensitive is valuable. More so in the present. God can do anything. God can speak a word. And God can do anything for your life. I know very well. We are going to be lifted. We will never live here the same. We won't live here the same. The other, Katonda, Sibuli Muntu Yen Nayanati, Mobilebio, Katonda Mokusin, the Kira, Mobilebio. It is not that God will send you anyone in times of season. The men we have here. It might take seasons or times when But they came in the right season with the right words to us. They come in the right season and prepared with the right words for us. So we go back to following times. But these are the seasons. Whatever is in us to be born. Whatever is in you to be born. I know very well. Some will live here. We will begin to have visions. We will begin to have dreams. We will begin to have knowledge because once the anointing comes it will rise up that which is inside of you and I feel inside there's a, there's a bouncing baby 
phone was just playing. Mukama yeva si. Adisani, the baby is jumping. Mukama yeva si. Hallelujah. So two kids on one on one at hand, you go to We believe that as the baby begins to jump without getting tired, ama wanga kagenda kunyonya. Nations will look for us. But so whenever you have brothers, ama wanga teganyo nyabala bikaburunji. Nations don't look for the good looking. Ama wanga teganyo nyabala bikaburunji. They, they don't but look yeah. for those who eat well. Na yama wanga ganyo nyachiri munda mufe. But nations are looking for what is on the inside of you. Come on, Eva, praise the Lord. So what is on the inside? Of you? What's the men come and rise it up? That means we must go back and keep it without settling it. Come on, Eva, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. And the word of knowledge we've acquired. Oh, put the yoke with some of the back of the way. The word of knowledge we've acquired. Oh, put the yoke with some of the back of the way. The word of knowledge we've acquired. What we've heard. And, and what the spiritual world. When they get something that adds on to them in the spirit, they don't go back to eat. Ibrahim. Abraham God spoke to him and told him leave your country in verse 7 he left food and he went and did yet God has spoken to him it's another thing God to speak and it's another thing for what he has spoken to come to I've seen people God had spoken to them they went back and they ate food yes. and things died. When what God has spoken to us, we must Alleluia. go and walk in what God has spoken to us. Hallelujah. I love it when we have a men's meeting. Frozen. Amen. Frozen. Why do I go? Okay. So, um, you can all have a seat. Thank you. About one, about one hour. Yes, yes, one hour. One hour. So, I'm gonna teach for about what, half an hour. And then afterwards, I think sometimes it's best to have questions and answers. Yeah. So I think you, we learn better that way. Because what's in your heart may be different from another person. So when I'm preaching, it's like I am taking this water and I spreading it. But when you ask a question, you have to wonder what you was that me giving you a cup. Because I will address the issues that you have. And so I think today I got a um, word that I feel that the Lord wants to give. And um, it's a word that uh, really talks about a, uh, a man of God that I want to share. Uh, I want to share your the, the the word with. Uh, Pastor Paul may be lead, leading us uh, afterwards, right? Because he is going to help in another project. So uh, he's leaving up because he doesn't like what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. So, all right, okay, all right. So, so okay. So I'm, today I'm going to talk about uh, a story that has to do with a few men in the Bible. So, this man that I'm going to talk about, he's one of my heroes in the Bible. He's from the New Testament church. But even though I believe he's a great man of God, none of the books of the Bible are with his name. Uh, you know, the name of the New Testament you have, a lot of the books are written by the Apostle Paul. James and Peter. And uh, Mark. Luke. Luke. Matthew. But this man, none of, 
His name is not in any of the books. Oh, Mukula, I don't want to talk to you about Mama Matilda. He's a great man of God. He's a great man of God. He's a great man of God. I like the way he leads men. And I want to be like him. And so this man I'm talking about, his name is Barnabas. Barnabas is a very interesting man. And so Barnabas was the man that vouched for Paul when Paul became a convert. You all know Paul his name was Saul. And on the road to killing Christians, and the Lord came to him and touched him. He was slain on the ground. And then he met the Lord Jesus. And then when he was converted, became a Christian, instead of killing Christians, he wants to see more Christians. But then a lot of the leaders, they were, they were still suspicious of him. <laughs> Who was the man who vouched for him? Who was the man that took him? That received him? He says, I will be your mentor. And everybody is afraid of him. They don't trust Paul. Because he used to kill Christians. But Barnabas saw him. The way Jesus saw him. So Barnabas took Paul and mentored him. And, Bar and Barnabas was his mentor, his teacher, and his disciple. And Paul was under Barnabas. And so one day, Barnabas and Paul and now decided to take two other young men. Silas Silas and John Mark on a trip to plant churches and so they will go but in chapter 15 of Book of Acts something happened something terrible happened that affected their relationship and this was the time when Paul and Barnabas had a big disagreement was, and the disagreement was, was about John Mark because Paul found that during the trip that John Mark wasn't meeting the Mark. John Mark he missed the Mark. <laughs> Sorry for the pun. Eh? <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is that he was disappointed. And Paul thought that he was not a acceptable to be on the trip. Send him back. And so Paul and Barnabas was uh, having a private discussion. And Paul, I can imagine both of them together. And John Mark cannot be trusted. John Mark I, I, I don't think I can receive them. And Barnabas may have said to Paul. Of course, I'm exaggerating. But he could be, you know, but you know, give him a chance. I give him a chance. And then Paul could have said to Barnabas, you know what? You said about John Mark because John Mark is your relative. It's true, they are their relatives. And so they, they, they you know what? We cannot agree. Mm -hmm. So Paul took Silas and he went one way. Barnabas took Paul John Mark and went the other way. So there was a separation. Two great men of God loves the Lord doing God's work. But there was a disagreement. We don't know who's right or wrong. The Bible doesn't tell us who's right or wrong. But the Bible tells us that there was a disagreement. Then, then what happened after that? Because of both of them, both of them are strong leaders. You can imagine Paul is a very strong leader. He's a 
a strong belief. You can tell by the way the story of his life. He is a no nonsense man. And you can tell by the life of Barnabas. He was a soft-hearted man. Both great men. But both very different. One very strong. They are very compassionate. But in both ways, there are people who love the Lord. And then what happens? There is a change that comes. We know that at the end, at the end there is a good story. At the end there was a good news. Because at the end, when we read the Bible, that there was reconciliation between John Mark, Barnabas, and Paul. And they are there, and they were people that decided to reconcile. The story here is about reconciliation. Because we know that Paul reconciled with John Mark. Because the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 4.11 Paul told Timothy Timothy was the disciple of Paul. He wrote, he said, get Mark and bring him with you. God he has been helpful to me in my ministry. So we see now that Paul and John Mark had reconciled. He said that no, John Mark has changed. And now he's helpful to me. And another story we hear in Colossians chapter 4, verse 10. Again, Paul wrote. He said to the disciple Archus. He says that my fellow prisoner wishes to remember you as does Mark, the relative of Barnabas. You receive instruction concerning him. If he comes to you, give him a warm welcome. So again, we know that Mark and Barnabas were related. Again, we see that Paul again he encourages the people to receive Mark, to give him a hug. See, the lesson we can learn is as men of God, sometimes you and I, one with one another, with the people of your church, with your, mess, with your mentor, with your pastor, or with people who are you discipling, or one of your followers, whatever it may be, there will be misunderstanding. There will be offenses. We will say things, do things that disappoint one another. You see, the key word is this. We all have expectations of one another. Paul had an expectation of John Mark. Maybe he thought, Paul, that John Mark should be like Silas. You see, men, we all have expectations of one another. I'm standing up so the people behind can see. And, and so, in that expectation, when people don't meet our mark, we are disappointed. We feel that we are frustrated with him. So Paul really was frustrated with John Mark. He was also maybe upset with Barnabas. But Barnabas was a man. Was a man of reconciliation. We can learn from this. That when Paul and John Mark reconciled. We learned that we must all change the way we think. We must give people a second chance. And that we must always forgive. You see brothers, when we don't forgive, it's always the people that are closest to us that hurt us the most. It's the people that we love, that we serve, that we helped, that they hurt us the most. Yeah. 
And as men, we keep it to ourselves. Now we're not just cigarettes. No, we're not like women. No, I'm true. For us, we are true as cigarettes. We don't talk about it sometimes. But, but most of, even as we talk, we don't express our hearts. We don't express our hearts. We don't express our hearts. And so what we have is we have a lot of hurts. But what we learn here in the story is that Paul, John, Mark, Jokan, and Mariko forgive one another. is very important. Forgiveness is, is to me like the other side of word of knowledge. If I'm going to be a soldier for God, when I'm ministering to people, I take out the word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. Very powerful. But what we need is another gun that also helps us. Maybe not. I wouldn't call it a gun. If you are a soldier, you need a weapon. But you also need first aid. You need medicine. So when you go to war, you need a gun to fight. But you need the medicine to heal your wound. Because sometimes when you fight, the bullet comes from behind. The bullet comes from your friend. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it, ha it happens, right? So you are shooting the devil, but the bullet comes from your friend. <laughs> yes. Right? So what happens? You need to have to carry the first aid. And the most powerful healing for a man of God is forgiveness. Forgiveness. When you are wounded, when you are angry, when you are offended, you're in pain. And that is when you, then you don't forgive. You see the person, you think about the person, you, you get angry. And when you get angry, what happens to you? You become bitter. You have hatred. You have unforgiveness. And the Bible tells us unforgiveness is poison. But you're slowly taking it. It is poison that's slowly killing you. Unforgiveness is poison that is slowly eating your life away. When you have unforgiveness, you can function, but you are wounded. You know, it's like a, it's like a soldier who can fight, but he's wounded. When you fight in the war, and there's a bullet here, but there's a bullet here, you can fight, but you're still wounded. You cannot fight well. How to fight well? Why not? Because you're wounded. What is the wound? The pain of a brother. The pain of a sister. The pain from your pastor. The pain from somebody you admire. Maybe a pain from your student. Or your church member. The pain comes. It's poison. It wounds you. And we cannot be effective. If you have the word of knowledge, but you have pain of unforgiveness, you're only half Powerful. But when you're healed, when the healing comes, then you can operate in full. So the, the great power of, of forgiveness is needed in your life. When you forgive, you are healed. When you're bitter and angry, you are wounded. But when you have when you forgive, Jesus. Yes. Forgive you. You forgive others. Say, Lord Jesus, I forgive my brother. I forgive my sister. Say that right now. Forgive. Lord Jesus, 
I forgive my brother and my sister. Come on, As we are thinking now, there are names of people, faces of people that have hurt you, that you have not forgiven. Now, think of them right now. Just close your eyes for a minute. Do you see their face? Do you see their name? It can even be your father, maybe your mother, your brother or sister, your cousin, even your pastor. Anybody that cause you wound, can you think of them now? And then now you start to say, Lord Jesus, I forgive them. I release them for hatred. I forgive them. Grace me to release this anger. In Jesus' name. So that when you think of them, when the face comes to your mind, you don't feel angry anymore. And that's where the power of forgiveness has happened. Will start. You see, unforgiveness is poison. Forgiveness is the answer. It's the medicine. When you take forgiveness, you'll be free of pain. The only way you can be free of pain from unforgiveness or the hurt people give to you, the only way to get rid of the pain is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Only way. You can try to forget. You try not to think of the person. But when you think of them, the pain is still there. You have not forgiven. Running away. Going to another place. Going to another church. Not thinking of them. Those do not take away the pain. It will not. It is still there. It's just hiding there. But when you forgive, your father, your mother, anybody, when you forgive them, the pain leaves you. It will. You decide now to forgive in ministry. You have to do a lot of forgiving. If you want to be a leader, if you want to be a pastor, you want to do great things for God, let me say this to you. You will be wounded. People will offend you. People will hurt you. It will happen if you don't want to be hurt by other people then don't be a pastor don't be a leader it will happen I am sorry but it will happen you are men of God Jesus suffered for us so when we suffer we suffer with Jesus he knows, Amen. Amen. but just forgive. We cannot stop people from hurting us. We cannot stop because we don't know what people will do. We cannot control people, right? We cannot stop them from hurting us. We cannot stop them from talking or doing things that will hurt us. We cannot. But we can control how we feel. We can control what we think. We cannot control them. But we can control what we do to them. We can control that. And the key is forgiveness. They don't have to say sorry. For us to forgive them. Don't say, they must say sorry before I forgive. No need. Forgiveness is your choice. Look, if, if the people who hurt you are dead, how do you get them to come back to forgive you? Oh, no, but you know, how do you say sorry? How do you say sorry? Oh, I am oh, I'm dead, so you can say sorry to me. Oh, the <laughs> cell phone is going to be in the toilet. You can't, right? I'm not sure. No, right? So, I don't need them to say sorry to me. Yeah. Maybe they're not in Uganda anymore. Maybe they're far away. Maybe they don't even know they offended us. How can you go to your father? Father, you offended me. Your father said, what? I'm you. I'm your father. It's very hard for them to say I'm sorry. Come on. Yes. No need to say I'm sorry. The one is about to find out with your You just forgive. We're Sarah Woo.
Sorry, no, sorry, never mind. I forgive you. So I have no more pain. Amen, brothers? Very important. If you want to do God's work for many, many, many years, you cannot be wounded. Always forgive. Amen. 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 Okay. Now, there, there is some time for us to ask questions, right? What has you finished until Friday? Exactly. Okay. So we just in time. Okay. So questions now. Half an hour. Why do I need you, Uzo? Anything you want to ask? Your measure of Uzo. Your brothers. So one by one. The one that we got here. Come here, brother. Amen. Yeah. Then you can learn a bit. My name is Igam from Masaka. One minister has been working somewhere. And they plan to his wife. And let the husband go for work. And they agreed on that. Their father was moving well. But when the husband went to work, he would spend there six months and, and he comes back. The company where he works told him that he will get a, a term of rest for six months. No, you'll break off every after six months. You'll go back, rest for one week and return for work. So during such a time the wife began to, you know, to fornicate, to commit adultery. And where the husband was, they began to call him. And they told him that your husband is misbehaving, your wife is misbehaving. So because of the relationship, which was between both of them, the husband took long to believe it. But the time came and he believed it after getting proof. After the wife apologized and he called the elders of the church and all others, few ministers. I was also inclusive in the meeting. And she said, My husband, I repent. I, and she repented. But it is believed that the man who had, uh, she had eloped with was HIV positive. So this is what happened. They went for a blood test and tested their blood. And the woman was infected. She had gotten the AIDS virus through whatever she did. And yet the word of God tells us that when someone uh, sins against you and turns to you and says, please forgive me, you forgive him or her. Now, Pastor. <laughs> I think, um, I think the Yes, exactly. Yeah. the same the same way. the same the same so I think I think that I think it's a very sad situation. And then I am not where you are. Take a sign. And then teacher, teacher, come back. It's a. It's a very sad situation. And then I am not. You know, being six months away. It's never a good thing. Sichirunji. And I think that as ministers, whether you are working for God or working for a company, you know, uh, being away for so long is always dangerous. You know, in this case, the, the woman uh, uh, committed adultery. 
But there are also many stories of men committing adultery and they go out for six months. So I think that the most important thing is that, of course, they, they if he wants to be in a relationship with his wife, if he wants to be, if the wife repents, she, he must be able to accept her and reconcile the relationship. It can there can be a new beginning to the relationship. Um, and and with HIV, if she takes care of herself well, she might still live long. But because of right now, it's a situation where he cannot have sexual intimacy with his wife. Of course, it is now a very difficult situation for him. So, the Bible is clear Bible that if the person commits adultery, you have the right to divorce. But if you can reconcile, that's fine. Because there's ways to live with a HIV wife who has repented where you can still be sexually satisfied. Without sexual intercourse. And they can help you with that. But I think the most important thing is that there must be that forgiveness. And he cannot choose to forgive and wants to divorce her. And he has the right to do that as well. There is nothing wrong. But the best thing is always to try to reconcile. We live in a time and age where there are many people who are married. Where them with the young couples, more, more, more and more of them are getting divorced. In many countries, not even in the West only. Even in Asia, young, young couples are getting divorced. It's a very difficult time. And it's because of social media. And I think that's the problem. But I believe that every marriage can be record, can be restored. Yes. Yes. I mean, well, yeah, it's your common question. What? Somebody has a question. Yes. yes. Um, what is the meaning of the Uh, Pastor, you told us in the morning that a gift without the anointing cannot go far. Yes. But I want to ask, how do you guard, how do you protect your anointing over your gift? Yes. Good question. Oh, oh. I think we did it. Very good question. I like that question. <laughs> Especially the hot one. Uh, like the HIV was very difficult. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think the difference between gift and anointing. See, when you're gifted, it's like being the piano. If you're gifted in the piano, you can play very nice music. Mm. But you play it for your mother, for your auntie, <laughs> for your friends. But when you're anointed, <laughs> you play the piano. You play for the president. Hallelujah. You see, anointing and giftings operate in a different way. You can be gifted, but it will touch maybe a few people. But when you are anointed, <laughs> the door will open for you. If you <laughs> okay. So anointing is very important. Yes. I love this brother. He he's very good. <laughs>
My wife took a video of him yesterday. When he was like me. So I've got to show in Singapore. To my church. And Powerful testimony is a Muslim becoming a Christian. And so and so I think so anointing, how do you, so anointing open doors that gifting cannot open. Okay. So how do you protect that? Keep that. Number one, be faithful in the little. God will give you much. If you don't want to give the word of knowledge to the poor, to the wounded, how can God give you the great people? And so you said give. Number two, you said give often. The more you use, the more people you touch, the more your Capacity will grow. You see, it's like this cup. It has capacity. And but when whatever you, whatever coffee you pour in here, the capacity can only hold that much. But if it's if, no matter what, after that you cannot hold anymore. This is the theology. And the theology why you that. The more you use, the bigger your capacity. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And then And so, number one is faithful in a little, faithful in much. Number two is to use it often. That's very important. Guard your heart. Don't let money become the corruption to your gift. Because then the door will close. You will still have the gift. But the anointing will not be there. And the fourth one, last one. Don't be prideful. Don't be boastful. Don't have a big head. Is that how you say it when you come prideful? Yes. Yes. Don't have a big head. Always remember, be humble. Because you know why? Without God, you're nothing. Without God, I'm nothing. I, uh, we, it's, I'm a postman of God. If God doesn't give me a letter to give to you, I have nothing to give to you. Amen. Amen. Just do those four and God, the nothing will be there. So, mm. thank you, Tisha. You have done us so bold. For me, I'm about the forgiveness you have talked about. There is a pastor, our neighbor. We got some misunderstandings. And after we sat together as a fellowship, and we forgave one another. But something disturbed me. Every time I invite him in our conferences, he doesn't eat in our church. Every time I call him, even if we have wasted like man like Bishop Grace, he has taught me. He gets up and says something I'm, I'm saying, What you are saying is not true. And he always disagrees with my ministry or my ministry. So I feel disturbed. And I say, I forgive this man. Now he's doing this. Ask me, I forgive him. But this is what I'm saying, I'm asking. When I sit with other ministers, I tell them this thing. Well enough, even the pastors that came with know about it. So some people tell me, forgive him, but put their bridge, put their space. Because every time he comes, he says that I've heard that. But what are you saying? So again, if I, I, I put there, I block him and don't fight him. It is like, it will look like I'm not forgiving. So now, help me. Yes. What can I do? Yes. 
Thank you, thank you. Another difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the about? It's like a relative you don't like. But you have to live with the relative. <laughs> and every time the relative comes, he makes you feel angry. But you cannot get rid of the relative. So, so what happens? Then you have to say that you are not happy with the relative. 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 If if I were you, I would sit down with him. And I would have a coffee with him. I would tell him how I feel. But I was stuck by telling him. Brother, I want to meet you. Because I love you. Because I want us to have fellowship. But there is a problem. And this is my problem. Why you never move it? Maybe the problem is me, brother. Or why is it the move? I said that. You cannot say the problem is you, brother. Or if I move a material, what is the reason of bang up a wall? If you say the problem is him, the wall will come up. It's saying that you just go and zimba. Then you cannot write. You cannot deal with the problem. Or it is the reason that you go and zimba. Brother, maybe the problem is me. Neyo kuba o utanza noka tova nzini diko busi. But there is an issue. Neyo nwe nsoma. Now when we come together, what you see kana? The things that you say. We tuvu na yoga rako. Hurts me. Being kosa. So the word hurts me. Ebi gambe we biyo njoga rako busi. See this is a good way. This is a good way to reconcile. Eno ngere no njoga rako tava gana. So when you say what you say, 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 what you're not saying that he's the problem. You're saying that what he says hurt you. And two things will happen. If he is a man of God, he will say, Brother, I'm sorry. And, and then he will learn to maybe not say certain things. That will hurt my brother. But if he says that is your problem, and then he gets up there upset, then maybe it is you can forgive him, but you don't have to relate to him. The Bible says we have to love everybody, but the Bible doesn't say we have to like everybody. Do you know what I'm talking about? It means when you need help, I will help you. Okay? But when I like somebody, said, I will walk with you. I will journey with you. Do you, you know I'm the difference? So when you love somebody, you forgive them. But I don't have to have. You know, a relationship with you. You, you do your thing with God. I do my thing with God. Okay. I respect you. Respect me. But we cannot work together. Because 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 we cannot work yeah, but the Bible tells us clearly there was a problem. Maybe they took a lot to do what was it? There was a separation. What was it? It was not wrong. They just, they just cannot get along. Okay. Did you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you, servant of God. My name is Chikome Komati from Sembabure. I have my parent who went with me for work. And I stood in prayer and overcame him. <laughs> but he had hurt me. My, my wound had healed. But again, he went on my child. So, my child is now sick. I forgave him again. But for him, he's not born again. He was born. But I fear to go and confront him directly because the, the, the war is spiritual. What can I do? This is the father. No, yeah, yeah, his father, Tata. 
who are Uganda one. Okay, it's a relative. A oh, relative. It's a yeah. relative. Yes. No, it's, it's not a believer. It's not a believer. Similar way. Similar. He's not a believer. Oh yeah. So when there's a, when you, you we cannot expect to reconcile. With an unbeliever, like with, with a believer. They are, they do not have Jesus. So we cannot use the same way. As we would with another brother. So with a, with a with an unbeliever. If they do not want to change. If you went to talk to him and he still remains the same person, no lavanga musani quality not touch you hurt you, then maybe it's best to avoid him. You can forgive him. But if somebody keeps coming to you and you have a you have a wound, the wound is from him. And you forgive him. No musani The wound is healed. But there is the, the, the scar. But if he comes every time and poke it, then, then you don't want to have him. You just have to avoid him. That is the only way. Wow. And you give it Yes. You talked about forgiveness, sir. I married my wife and even introduced her. But someone at church who was the chairman of the organizing committee, he picked people from his committee and they sat on me. So the fact that I'm a singer, I'm favored before people. Everything was covered, they had prayed to do everything. So I sat with him and we said that after the wedding, all the money we have received from different places, we keep it. I I do a business for my wife and I also do another business for salon and he said that's fine after the function after our honeymoon he took us at the shop and he bought us <laughs> 5 kilograms of beans he did not stop there. All our channels of this man, he blocked them. We asked him to give us all the pledges from people. And he said no. He told them that did you come for the wedding? Did you eat? Did you drink? So that thing, it is between man and him. He's more heavy than me. He's bigger than me. Every time I try to sit with him, my wife told me that let us forgive him. He has a plastic smile. Crocodile smile. Crocodile smile. <laughs> he can laugh at you. <laughs> but he has always fought against me. So I feel. Uh -huh. When he always goes and messes me up everywhere, puts that on me on my name. <laughs> he had left his phone on the, on the, on the, on the table and the bag and the thief came and took it away. and he said I think it's me who took it so what can I do <laughs> I'm tired of eating the beans which he gave to me <laughs> No, uh, no, 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 we don't. You can bring it to us with a spanking. Terrible man. Thank you, Terrible man. I'm so sorry to hear that. And uh, there is no way he's going to give you what you deserve. And uh, I can tell from what your story is saying that it's a very unfortunate situation. But 
what you should do is you can't change him but you can change the way you feel about him <laughs> <you. laughs> and it's very important <laughs> because you're still young <laughs> you still have a whole life <laughs> so don't let him control how you feel <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if, if he still makes you feel angry that means no no not only has he taken what is yours he's also taken away your happiness he's in control of your life why do you want to let him control your life although he has hurt you as long as he still hurts you that means he has control over your life I don't want anyone to control my life I don't want to have anyone control over my happiness when I think, when I think of a person if he still makes me unhappy that means the person still controls me. Why do I want to let that do happen? I want to let it go. You're young. Pray. Don't go and vindicate God. Don't go and vindicate me. 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 But he was also a very stingy man. You know, no, rich doesn't mean you're generous. Huh? There are many rich people are stingy. So this man did business with me. But every time we do the business, he would then ask for a discount. Every time the discount. So, but I cannot get the discount from my supplier. But I must give him a discount. Because he's a buyer. So I always make less and less. It happens so many times. So I keep praying. I say, God, you do something. God, you do something. It wasn't straight away. But one day, about a year later or two years later, I, I forgot the exact date. But I got news. He was in his office, sitting down, and he had a heart attack. And he died. He was in his office, sitting down, and he had a heart attack. And he died. 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 And he but after that, the person who took over was his nephew. It was very easy to do. <laughs> so, you know, the thing is that I don't pray that the person dies. <laughs> but I'm saying that you, you pray and ask God. And God will provide for you. Yes. 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 If you have a prophecy upon you, can you die and leave the prophecy when it's unfulfilled? First question. Uh -huh. The second question, someone came and gave him my product or for business, yeah, of which was 80,000 huh? And the following day he came and took some other products. And he said, come in the evening and pick your money. When I went, he never gave me. I'm promising a week. He promised for a week. A week he After a week he never gave me. I'm promising a month. After I said a month. After a month he never gave me. I went to him. When you saw me coming, he covered himself. He hid himself. I went to him the second time. The last time, I went to him very early in the morning. I knocked and refused to open the door. And I stayed there. <laughs> I had security. I told him open. He opened. And I told him that I'm taking, I'm confiscating something from you. And I took away some of this stuff, which are worth my money. 
I told him, let me go keep these things, I will not sell them. When you get my money, come and pick them. So as you speak, he's calling me. And he said, but you grab them. <laughs> The first answer to your first question is, is that yes, you can die and see the prophecies not fulfilled. Yeah, I mean, many of the prophecies in the Old Testament was not fulfilled. Uh, the, the prophecy, for example, for, for Abraham, his descendants would be like stars and sand. Abraham never saw that. He was okay. And so, so, but he was fulfilled after he died. Yeah, I'm sure that, that but that's okay. And uh, the second point is about the business. Uh, uh, the best way I find that to learn business. This is very careful. You want to do business. The best way to learn from business is not from your success. Because when you learn from your success, you will just be doing the same thing again and again and again and again. But when you learn from your mistakes, you will grow. You will improve a lot more. Yes. So through this situation, you tell yourself, what mistake did I make? from that business. Mm, business eh, so when we learn, but we, we don't repeat the same mistake. You will do much better. You, you understand? Yes. Because if I do something well, and I learn from it, I, I will just do the same thing again. But if I make mistakes, there is a loss. But I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> Next time there's no more loss. Let my situation improve better. So life is always about learning from our mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. So, so brother, this is a situation where you can learn. So, number one, this guy, you cannot trust him. Secondly, if you want to take something from me, pay me first. You don't pay, you don't get. I will not trust you. He says that, how can a brother do that to another brother? But, but he has to also understand, how can he do that to you? <laughs> how can he be a brother? Because he started the problem. Yeah, so the best thing is now, tell him, let's settle the problem. Okay. You pay me, I'll give back this stuff to you. And then we, you go your way, I go my way. Yeah. And, and one thing in business, settle problems quickly. So this problem, let's say, just started last week. Try to go to him, settle the problem, okay, and move on. Because when you don't settle the problem with him, is that you are angry. He's angry. And you drag for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Worse and worse. More more angry. It's, like, it's like boiling water. The temperature gets higher. And it's not good. So the Bible always says this. Remember the story Jesus says. Say the person who owes the person money. The, the, he, he says settle matters quickly. Settle matters quickly. So whenever I have a conflict with anybody. I try to solve it within one minute. Because the... The temperature is not so high yet. 
I'm not I'm not so angry until I'm there's hatred. Because I've seen people who do not agree, misunderstanding, take his thing, take his thing, and they never they, they let it drag for months and years and became a big fight. When, when you settle matters quickly, it is a small matter. And the loss is small. The damage is small. But if you let it carry on, it comes like those gangster movies. It comes a bad movie. Okay. So if you can, the two ways to settle. Give him a call. Let's settle this. If you pay me, I give back to you. Or, or if you can, say okay, tell you what. I'll give you back your stuff. You have my things. Maybe I'll give you a discount. You pay me, maybe not totally. Maybe pay me $18. $18. And, and, the the and move on. That's the best way. Amina. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Thank you for those uh, words of wisdom. Mm. Uh, my question is about the rapture. Oh, another hard question. <laughs> the, church, the church has been waiting for rapture since we got saved many years ago. Many people have died. But when I've read the Bible, if you look at uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. <laughs> Says that it's a, it is appointed for men to die once. And afterwards, the judgment. So, and then for us in church, believing rapture is like, go, go, Jesus is going to take us. Living the earth to their devil. Can devil will not win Jesus? Can the devil win Jesus? Can devil win Jesus? When you read Luke 1.33, the Bible says of Jesus' kingdom, there is no end. So my question is, the rapture, is it real? I need Jesus. Yes. I need, I, I need Jesus. Okay, so there are four interpretations of the book of Revelation. And, and to be honest, I have my own personal interpretation of which of the four I, I, I prefer. But we don't know who's going to be right until we meet Jesus. So I don't try to, um, there's an English word, split hair, you know. It, to me, it, that, those things are not that important. I keep my mind on winning souls. Because, because I want to do something that will hurt the devil the most. What will hurt the devil the most? To prove people out of hell. Right? And so that's, the devil wants to hurt God. By bringing more into hell. So I want to hurt the devil. By bringing more into heaven. And that's why I think the word of knowledge and prophetic is very important. It's a new way of reaching souls. And so the rapture, I don't know. Jesus, Jesus himself said, I don't know. Yes, he didn't agree. Man, I guess man, you're not going to be banana. So Jesus said, Jesus said, I don't know when. What you mean? So my answer to you, my brother that I respect, I don't know. Oh, my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. So my brother that I respect, I don't know. But will it be taking from here and going? Or will it be a rapture after Jesus comes again? Uh, I don't know. CD. Maybe you know, you tell me, I'll learn from you. Yes, <laughs> brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, brother. Yes, yeah, brother. Yes, 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 brother
He has, I have looked after him. What do you He has two questions. Yeah. Pastor, you have talked about forgiveness. <laughs> and you gave us an example of Paul and Barnabas. But, my first question that how how does forgiveness develop? How does it come? How does it develop in someone? Number two. That, number two. How do you deal with the pain in you? Because in most cases, there are people who hurt us intentionally, who intend to hurt us. <laughs> and they are very intentional. Yeah. And there are those who hurt us when they are unintentional. So where we see the separation of Paul and Barnabas, my, my, my third question, that is forgiveness also a gift from the Holy Spirit? Because there are people we see that they are easy to forgive. You, you hurt someone, you do something wrong to someone, but it takes his car, takes his car, and you know, he forgives you. And again, there are people who say, like, oh, that once you hurt him, he's a hard man, he doesn't want to know. So, that's my question. Is it a gift also given to some people to easily forgive or it is not? Good question. Again, one more hard question. Number one. So okay. <laughs> forgiveness is a decision. Yes. It is not an emotion. Yes. It is my deciding to forgive you. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 How you do it? So number one is it is for everybody. It is not a special power. Anyone can do it. Unbeliever or believer can forgive. It's a decision you make. Then you choose. No Number one. Second is that when you forgive. It is firstly by you deciding. When you have decided, what happens next is that the pain will leave you. Most of us think, when the pain leaves me, then I can forgive. It is when I forgive, by deciding, choosing, saying it, I forgive you. Then the pain will leave. Our and the pain leaves sometimes quickly. Sometimes it leaves slowly. The first person I had to forgive in my life when I became a born again Christian was my father. My father was a terrible father. I hated my father. <laughs> I hated him. I wanted to kill him. I was not a believer. But when I became a believer, I decided to forgive him. The first person I forgive was my father. He had, he, I had suffered for more than 21 years. He, will, he abused my mother. Made me very angry. I fight with him to protect my mother. Of course it's a lot of hurt. I understand. So when I talk about forgiveness, I know. I've experienced it myself. In my home. But at 21, when I gave my life to Jesus, first thing the Lord told me, forgive your father. And I choose to. I, I don't need to. I could hold on to the anger. But when I hold on to the anger, I think I have control over my father. But actually he has control over me. 
So I decided to forgive. So I firstly just say it. I don't feel it. I'm still angry. But when I say it, something happened. Something happened. So how do I know when forgiveness is has taken place? Is when I think of that person. I don't feel angry. There's no more pain. That is when you know forgiveness has taken place. It's when you think of them, there's no more pain. Okay. And when I think of my father now, I have no more pain. I have a relationship with him. I, 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 I meet up with him. We're reconciled. But I never went to my father and told him I hate him. I never asked him to apologize. He doesn't know I'm angry with him, in fact. But it doesn't matter. It's about me and God dealing with my pain. Amen. Amen. Okay, all right. That's to say two more. One more. One more. No, the other gentleman also. The other gentleman. Yes, yes. On, uh, praise the Lord. I greet in the name of Jesus. Someone was asking about rapture. But about rapture, you have patience. Amen. Maybe. <laughs> So, so in this case, you say in the name of Jesus, 
Kuwanga kuwa matunda ya burundi. Kuwanga umuru mi abuse gama muri nyanya sugu eche wala genda. Chige zako kujia kumuna mwa. But sometimes when you have the word of knowledge, and you feel a pain, like in my church, when we have a big meeting, our ministers will come and say, "Oh, oh, 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 And sometimes they will pray. Never turn go observe. And God will give them a pain. Mukamu sa ba take go burumi. In certain parts of the body. Oba kuchunu ya webe mbele benga wu. And they will say, there's somebody here with this with a pain on the leg. Ori na ngamu kama gamba wadu wa yeri ya no burumi mu. But they will feel the same pain. Katunga wapa. And when the person comes out, erodi wa fayo. When the person comes out and they pray, never must have it. The pain leaves them. E chimba de chimukute. And it happens. So sometimes maybe somebody who has a headache. And you pray for them. Or Somebody has a back problem. What do I know? After you pray for them, it leaves you. That's very true. That's very true. Some of us want that. But you must say, there's something small. First, I wanted to. It's like many of us have asked about forgiveness. Have you realized that? Yes, for sure. Yes, most forgiveness questions have come about forgiveness. But there is something also I wanted to add. And like I told you, you had me. Uh, don't worry, I'll interpret in Uganda. Like you heard me talk about with well, the prophetic word which came to me this morning. You remember? One of the things God has taught me about forgiveness is that uh, you remember when Jesus was saying, He said that once when you have enemies, pray for them. Yeah. So one of the best ways to forgive people is even after you remember, the pastor said that you confess that I forgive so and so, but after that, you begin to pray for that person who hurt you because there is power. Every time Excellent. you pray for someone, when you pray for your enemy, Excellent. you pray for someone who has hurt you. Yeah. There is that yeah. grace which comes yeah. through prayer, yeah. Yeah. and God will release that person and yeah. release Excellent. you. Excellent. Amen. Excellent. Amen. Excellent. So to go to Sabira Bato, what was wrong with you? Yeah, one man. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. Over to you, Bishop. Let us appreciate Pastor Simon. We cannot answer every question. We have one more session to climax. We have session here. We have one more session. So we are going back to the hall. We are going to the women. We get to watch all of us. Simon and the whole team. Simba Simon, the team here, you know. Will lead us as God is guiding them. But to pull in, believe me, come on, come on, come on. To come in, 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 come on. So kage ende na fetu gobero urbani manga basi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you later. Grip Media Uganda Limited. We are glad to bring you original and genuine equipment. We do solar fittings and power installation services and also dealers in the sale of electronics and all accessories. Speakers, woofers, radios, flash D6 and empty CDs, memory cards, TV sets, chargers and solar panels, wires, bulbs and connectors. We promote businesses on radios and TV stations plus social media platforms. We do welding and metal fabrications plus repairs. We do masts, stroke broadcast towers fabrications of different sizes and heights plus general construction of masts on site. The installation of FM radio studio equipment and other technical services. Call us on 0776 95 18 11 or 0754 95 18 11 or send a whatsapp message on 0702 95 18 11 you can also visit our website www.gripmediauganda.com at grip media uganda we believe and trust in god because both riches and honor come from him Grip Media Uganda Limited. Tuliba sani funyo, o kutu sakebi ntwe video original, eranga vye sigika. Tuwa ya ringebi zimbe, awamuno kutu ndebi ntubio na, emikuze sama sanyalaze, nesola.
omuli waya, bulbs, emizindalo, woofers, radios, flash disks, empty CDs, memory cards, TV sets, solar panels, tuoche biuma no kubidabiriza. Omuli emirongo tija radio stations, NZG, amadirisa, ebitanda, okosakone emini miamilala minji nyo ujetukola, ejiri tekniko. Tuwene business yo, tujimanyisa abantu, okuita kuzi radio, zi TV, ne kushashol media. Tukola video coverage, ema nyeri singa wo, tukubile kusimu. Zero musamvu musamvu mukaga, chenda mutanu, kumina munana, kumina emu. Oba, zero musamvu tanu nya, chenda mutanu, kumina munana, kumina emu. Oba uweleza WhatsApp message ku 0570-15-18-10. Tuchari leko une ku website ya fe www.gripmediauganda.com Mugrip Media Uganda, fetuwe singa mukama kubango bugaga nechitibwa bivajari. Let's